So we, we start looking to algorithm for regular registers. And we have a single designated writer and uh, multiple readers and readers. And we look to these algorithms now. So let us start with uh, a centralized algorithm and discuss what is uh, the problem with this algorithm. So we assume one designated leader, so one process designated leader, and to read, a node will ask the leader for the latest value. So it sends a request to the leader and gets back the latest value. And to write, we will um, send a request to the leader and the leader updates the value. So the value is of this um, register is at the site of the leader. So this algorithm should be correct. I mean, it satisfies the determination property and the validity property. But still, there is some problem with this algorithm. So what is the problem? The problem, of course, is that it does not work if the leader crashes. If the leader crashes, um, nobody can perform any operations. So the leader is a centralized point in the algorithm, and therefore it is not faltered. But it works to implement a regular register in a non-faulty scenario. So now let us go to fault tolerant algorithms. We start first step by step by looking at an algorithm that is bogus. I mean, it is not correct. And later we, mo we modify this algorithm to make it a correct algorithm. So the basic idea we want is to make an algorithm such that a read just reads the local value, whereas a write writes to all nodes. So here is a sketch of the algorithm to perform a write on the register and you want to write the value v. So you start a write request and what you do, you update the local value to v. You trigger a broadcast request to all nodes. So this is a best effort broadcast as long as this node is alive. It is guaranteed that the, the message broadcast will be delivered and then you immediately return. Okay, that is uh, the right operation. And just remember that in the right operation, whenever a broadcast message is delivered to a node, the node updates uh, the value locally. To read, you just read the local value. So this algorithm is not correct. It does not satisfy the regular register specification. And to see that, let us look to a scenario. Here is two processes, P1 and P2. The writer starts the algorithm. It broadcasts the message, but then it immediately terminates after starting the broadcast, best ever broadcast operation. But the delivery of the message happens here. So it is here is a time where the node that delivered this broadcast message will update the value of the register. You can see now that process P1, if it performs an operation, a read operation that comes after the completion of the write, then it will return the value zero. And that it violates the specification of the regular register because the reader has to return the last value written. And the last value written in this case will be the value of five. But no problem, this we can, we can change easily. And that is what we are going to show here. So we are still in read one, write all algorithm. And we are going to modify the bogus algorithm in such a way we, are, we use a perfect failure detector that means that we are in the fail stop model. And then we do the following. So this is the old algorithm as it is. What we do now is basically before returning, we wait for an acknowledgement from all alive nodes. And of course, our failure detector will keep track exactly of which nodes are alive. 
Therefore, we cannot wait forever. We just wait for acknowledgement of alive nodes and then return. The read operation is exactly the same as before. Now you can see this was the old scenario. In our new scenario, the write operation will not complete until it gets an acknowledgement from process P1. And therefore, these two reads will be overlapping with that with the write operation. Therefore, it's completely legal that they return the value. Now let us go to our fail silent model. And we are going to show an algorithm in the fail silent model that requires more than half of processes have to survive for the algorithm to satisfy its liveness property, which is termination. So just uh, this means, of course, that we are also talking about a distributed model that is an asynchronous distributed model. So what's the main idea? Just to remind you with the quorum principle, we have discussed that before. Writes and reads always happen from a majority of nodes. You basically, if you want to request a write operation, you send the request to all nodes and you wait for a majority of nodes to tell you that, yes, we have updated the value. And the same thing for read. You read from a majority of nodes. In this algorithm, then at least one node knows the most recent value because the write quorum and the read quorum will always overlap in a single node. And that is our node that we are talking about, a single node. So just to remind you of the quorum principle, there are many different ways to do quorums, but the one we just described is a majority quorum system. And the basic idea is two quorums should intersect or overlap. For example, if the size of a read quorum is R and the size of a write quorum is W, then R plus W should be larger than the number of nodes in the system. And what we just described in the slide before was a majority quorum algorithm. So what are the um, pros of this algorithm? Is that it tolerates up to less than half of the node crashing. Okay, tolerate up to n divided by 2 minus 1 crashes. And the disadvantage or the cons of this is that we have to read and write from more than half of the nodes in the system. So more than half of the nodes in the system have to survive. There are other possible types of quorums. Just as an example, there's a Mikawa quorum where you arrange the nodes in a grid or a matrix like this and you write to rows and you read from columns, therefore every read and every write will overlap. And of course the, the advantage of this is that you need to read or write to square of n nodes. So in this case you need to read and write from three nodes. The disadvantage is that it tolerates at most square n minus one crashes. So it tolerates only two nodes in this example. Whereas in the majority quorum, we can tolerate up to four nodes, nodes crashing. So just look now to the algorithm of majority voting algorithm. So we assume as usual that, which is important when you are doing quorum in a fail silent model, that the majority of the nodes or processes are correct. If that is not satisfied, we will violate the Leibniz property, which is a termination property. And all register value will be the value plus a sequence number. And we are not going to use any failure detectors. We are, we are in a fail silent algorithm. So here's the algorithm for write. To perform a write operation on the register, you broadcast the value of V that is a uh, best ever broadcast and the sequence numbers. You broadcast a pair to all nodes. Every node delivering the broadcast will update the value to V and also store the most recent sequence number. The initiating node of the write 
waits for acknowledgement from a majority of nodes. Once it completed this step, it increases sequence number and returns. Let us now look to a read operation, a node performing a read operation. It will broadcast a read request to all nodes. And when a node gets the read request, it responds with the local value plus the sequence number. Now, the node that is requesting a read will wait and save the values from a majority of nodes. After it got the value from a majority of nodes, it knows that at least one of these values should be the most updated value. So it will return the value with the highest sequence number. This algorithm is almost right, but it has a slight problem. So let us see this in, on the next slide. The problem with this algorithm is that old writes may overwrite new writes. And here is one execution that shows this. We have five nodes in the system. This is five actually. And for a node to complete an operation, it needs three acknowledgement. So the write initiated by P1 completes here and it got an acknowledgement from itself from P3. So P3 has the value two now here and from P4. So P4 has the value two. But the broadcast message to P2 is taking time. It will arrive at this point. Now P1 performs another write operation. So uh, when it performs this write operation, it will get an acknowledgement from itself, from P2. P2 has the value 5 here, and from P3, and P3 has the value. But now, according to the algorithm, when the, the first broadcast message from P1 arrives at P2, it will overwrite the value written before. So at this point, P2 will have the value 2. Now let us see what happens now when P2 starts a read. When P2 starts a read, it will get an acknowledgement from P5, and P5 at this point has the value uh, 2. It will get an acknowledgement from P4, and, and P4 at this point has the value 2, and from itself. So it will read the value 2, which is, of course, wrong. It should have read the value 5. So we need to do a small modification of the algorithm and the modification is simply as that if you receive an update as a node from another node so you update your register only if the sequence number associated with the value is higher so if we go back here we see we should have disregarded this update thank you